one day I was at school, I had a friend call me up and said, we found it. We found the next step, the next climb. Yeah. He said, it's called Fracture Roof. So we drove up there and looked at it and um, just sat at the bottom, just looking at it, <laughs> looking at it, look at, trying to figure out which way it faced, if it was steep, how steep it was. It was just impossible to tell, which is why we ended up calling it the Grand Illusion. Yeah. <laughs> And granite doesn't tend to form overhanging walls with holes. Yeah. It's smooth. Yeah, exactly. And so pretty much everything you climb on had to be a crack. And so it was really difficult to find a crack that was not impossible, but, but still difficult. And back then, it was also considered bad style to hang dog. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you fell on something, the way you were supposed to do it was if you climb up, yeah. as soon as you fall, you let go, you don't even look at it, <laughs> you lower down and pull your rope. Yeah. Then you could try it again. Wasn't it more like, kind of like the more the European style of climbing a lot? Like, I've, I mean, I've talked to a lot of kind of climbers back in that time. And they were saying that it was kind of bigger in Europe already at that time, it was progressing, and that might have been a reason why they might have gotten kind of like a kickstart and they'd gotten stronger faster, because they'd gotten, you know, they could work the routes, so you can climb harder routes, obviously, if you can work it out and you can do them quicker. So I don't know if maybe kind of... Well, I totally agree there. with that. I totally agree with that. Actually, in America, at that time, Americans were very, very sheltered. They are basically... Yeah. Hold, they didn't want to even know about it, so really people didn't even think about it. They didn't yeah. even think that, that anyone was doing it somewhere else. Europeans, Americans, especially Californians, thought they were on top of the world with the climbing. Everybody yeah. else wasn't as good as they were. They were very um, condescending. Yeah. And so they couldn't imagine that anything anybody else was doing was worth it. It was, it's very, it was really sad. Grand Illusion for me was one of the first experiments in hang dogging. The first time I climbed out it, you know, I climbed and I fell off and just before uh, my friend was going to lower me down, I said, wait, kind of felt guilty, but I went, okay, okay, lower me, lower me, you know. <laughs> it was the next step in difficulty. I'm going to have to figure out something else. And so what I did was Climbed up a few times the first time I was there, felt out the crack, looked at it, went home, got the hammer out, cut wood, and started making replicas huh. of the climb. Yeah. And so that I would get on the climb and I'd just go, <laughs> and every few days practice training, yeah. on it, you know, and climb get the on muscle it. muscle memory. Yeah, and pretty much treat it like something to be trained for. Yeah. And so I, I, that's what I did. And so instead of actually climbing on the climb, to fit within the rules of ethics, I was practicing at home. Yeah. I was hang dogging at home to the best of my memory of what the climb was like. Yeah. I mean, I think Grand Illusion for me was, in a sense, was kind of breaking a barrier. It was, a, I think, a, a huge step towards like pushing my limits and a big accomplishment in my climbing in terms of like mental and also have a wide range of climbing and just kind of go around, do some trad and boulder and sport and just, you know, I want, I really want to get all these techniques and just be able to, you know, not always do the same thing so you never get bored, you always got something new to do. Cracks require a whole different kind of way of climbing. Yeah. And uh, if you can transfer between all the climbing styles, you're so much more versatile. The fact that you're doing something so hard at crack already, I mean, you're going to go far with that. <laughs>